Uh, Mr. John Gilstrap, he is a New York Times best-selling author. He's with us solo as a co-host today. It doesn't happen often, but uh, Matt Harvey had some court stuff he had to take care of today. He has a real job. He I does. don't. So <laughs> you, <it's... laughs> you, you have playtime. There we go. Yeah. Our guest via telephone is the aforementioned Senate President Craig Blair. Craig, good morning to you, sir. Good morning. It's a great day to be in West Virginia. Preceded, or West Virginia. Indeed, sir. Preceded by uh, Mitch Carmichael, your buddy there. He had some nice things to say about you. <laughs> I got to hear a few minutes of that, and uh, the, Mitch is a good man, and he's doing uh, a yeoman's job on the economic development work. And if you noticed, uh, he was talking about the team effect. I'm telling you, it's all hands on deck on being able to get these things across the finish line and being able to work together. Uh, and then the, 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 the word that we should be th- looking at right now is momentum. The momentum in West Virginia to be able to attract business is incredible. Uh, other states are having some prosperity. We are really, really doing well. I can remember when nobody paid attention to the state of West Virginia. That is not the case now. Craig, when, when did you get involved in the negotiations on this LG deal? Uh, it was about two months ago, and uh, there was a trip over to South Korea to meet with them, and I wasn't capable of making that, and I got ready and uh, sent two senators, Tom Takubo, because I knew what LG was working on, uh, and so Tom's a doctor. And then I sent uh, Glenn Jeffries also uh, to go over and do that. Or to, I say I, but it's sort of my call. But the Senate sent them as representatives to be able to get that uh, to help close the deal. Both of them are very, very articulate and understand industry and bring a lot to the table. And it was part of the component. Again, the team effect on how to be able to get companies like LG Industries, a Fortune 200 company, into the state of West Virginia. Look at it. 275 jobs with the pay. It's going to be 120000 plus a year. And the, the Gordon Gee said to me yesterday, he goes, you know, we're finally breaking the barrier. Uh, we're, we're, we're attracting manufacturing jobs, but this is intellectual jobs as well. This is like Silicon Valley. It's exciting to be able to see that take place in the state of West Virginia because we want a broad, diversified economy. I want to talk to you about the incentive package, Craig, and Mitch addressed it somewhat uh, as well. Is this a similar incentive package to the form energy situation? Uh, no. Uh, the, the, it's a, a different way of going about doing it. They, they've got thresholds. and, and well, Maybe I should say it's a little bit of both. On uh, to, to, uh, The state isn't going to be buying buildings, is my understanding. Whereas in Form Energy, uh, the, there was buildings to be acquired uh, that's part of that. So the, there was, how do I want to put it, uh, it was like a mortgage, so to speak, uh, for your listeners to understand. If Form Energy fails to provide uh, certain metrics and everything, the state actually d- doesn't give them re- resources, and we get to keep the property. And keep in mind, that uh, I'm getting ready to write an op-ed on the Form Energy. Uh, there's a lot of misinformation out there where people are just absolutely wrong. Form Energy is a component of being able to help attract LG Industries into the state of West Virginia. And you're going to see that in many other instances as well. We're not going to change the mindset of corporate America and the stockholders of the, that are saying that we want uh, carbon neutral footprints. And, you know, for, Frankly, in West Virginia, we're an all the above energy state where coal production's up. Natural gas production is up uh, in the state of West Virginia. And I'm a huge fan of both of those uh, to, to fossil fuel energies. But that doesn't mean that we can't diversify our energy economy in the state of West Virginia to be an all the above, which we have. Uh, and it pays dividends for when you go to be attracting the new cores, the Procter & Gamble's, the Clorox. As LG Industries. John Gilstrap. Morning, Craig. Um, do, you said very specifically that the um, delegation to South Korea, you sent a senator who is a, a doctor because he would understand what they're doing. Can you tell us what they will actually be doing uh, in, in these, these little operations that they're building? 
Yeah, I can tell you that in the short terms of on this, and that is is that there are ways now to be able to get into the healthcare industry to diagnose patients electronically and using artificial intelligence. Uh, there's other things that I can't talk about right now on this, and it's not LG Industries, but it's where uh, there. There could be something happening in the state of West Virginia that will make it so the time a, a drug uh, takes to go through the process will greatly be reduced because of the a process that uh, could very well be done in the state of West Virginia. And it will be an international game changer. But that's it. So it's going to be part of the component uh, for LG, though, of the, where they're t- traveling a somewhat similar path. And but they're wanting to get to get into the medical device arena more so than what they are. And this is going to be somewhat of the incubator and the, the development process. I'm ex- very excited about it because West Virginia, for instance, uh, is one of the state, the lowest states for patents. Uh, and, you know, patents, uh, the number of patents that are created by each state, that is something that is looked at because it talks, that's an indicator of innovation uh, that's there. You're going to see West Virginia go from the worst to one of the best uh, to, in, in this country for uh, patents that are submitted and approved uh, because of the technologies that are going to be coming from this. Now, gentlemen, I have to tell you that I thought I was coming on this show not to talk about LG, but to be talking about uh, our numbers for the month. Yes, we, I have the. Want to go there? Yes, I have that up uh, right now on my computer to transition uh, into uh, December of 2023, in which revenues uh, topped estimates by 120 million dollars. Craig. Yes. And uh, I'm somewhat excited about that. $120 million for the month of December, uh, but uh, for the year, we're running $406 million above revenue estimates. So that we're in a good spot. And keep in mind that the personal income tax, uh, well, let's just put it this way. We cut uh, seven $800 million in tax relief that we're giving back to the people of West Virginia uh, from this. So that ju- it just goes to show that things are going well in the state of West Virginia and how we're going about managing it. Personal income tax was above the estimates by $70 million for the month, and for the year, it's $201 million. Uh, sales tax collections was over $3.6 million for the month, uh, but it's $21 million over for the year. Corporate net. Uh, that's uh, a tax on business and the profitability of business. Uh, the, they were over $13 million for the month and 109 for the year. And c- keep in mind for your listeners that we're six months into our fiscal year. And historically, the second half of our fiscal year that's coming up is more fruitful than the first half. Uh, to, to, to just keep in mind how everybody likes to do uh, investment and t- things like that in the spring. They upgrade their home. They're getting ready for the summer. You know where I'm going with that. Well, that mm-hmm. happens across the board for all sectors, and so that's why it makes it better. Now, t- uh, the severance tax, which I've, I'm very proud of the fact that to a greater degree that we are not really budgeting severance tax anymore because it's on a roller coaster all the time. And uh, But we were up 11 and a half million dollars for the month on severance tax uh, and more coal and natural gas is actually being produced in the state of West Virginia than what was previously. The problem is the price has been down on that and so that's a double-edged sword. Uh, you know, if you're a consumer of those products uh, then you're benefiting by the lower price of it. Uh, but for the state's aspect of it, the severance tax well then that becomes low. Now, let me add one more thing. We're still below the revenue estimates for the year by $33 million. Our rainy day fund 
it uh, last month it was 1.16 billion. It is now 1.2 billion. So we had a 40 million dollar increase, and that was because of the investments in the rainy day fund. That is an excellent number. That's the sweet spot and where we need to be for that to be able to keep our bond ratings uh, in the places they need to be. And so that is just an excellent place. Then if you look at the $400 million that we got parked in the personal income tax reserve fund, we got one of the best rainy days in the country if you added that into it. Uh, Otherwise, we're ninth. We're in the top ten. Uh, so very proud of that. The amount of people that is actually getting an unemployment check right now in the state of West Virginia is 6,198. Uh, that's the uh, unemployment data. It lags a little bit further behind. That's not December. That's October of 23. So what I'm trying to say is everything's good. The momentum is on our side, how we are managing our resources. And, and again, it's a team effect when we're investing in ourselves of in to doing it holistically, broadening the economy so that we are not tied to one any specific industry. And that pays dividends for the people of West Virginia. John? I'm assuming you're staying on the budget here. Uh, yes. Um, when it comes to our rainy day fund is sort of a tsunami fund now. You know, it's, it's, there's a lot of rain that we can afford to have. It's large. And we also have the the, the budget excesses and whatever, the, the revenue excesses. Is there a point that we're going to redirect all of these extra funds toward the biggest problems in the state, such as education? And I don't I don't want to get into... You know how how to spend that money because I'm not smart enough to know that. But it seems to me that there's a uh, there's a study of some sort that is justified to figure out what we're doing wrong uh, in in our test scores and what have you, and, and to figure out a way to fix it. And as an adjunct to that, is the the new industries, the the LGs and the CMCs that are coming in much there um certainly lg is more think tanky if that's not even a word uh do we expect that to have an impact a positive impact on the pressures in the education system to to improve the press the the um the test scores that's a great question you asked too much of it so i'm going to start out with the beginning of it okay. you may actually have to remind me by the time i get to the end <laughs> uh, but but so how we're managing this is is that if to, like last year 1.8 billion dollars in excess revenues. Well, what we did was is that we want to give basically a third of it back to the taxpayer. Okay, that, that helps grow and diversify our economies as well. And then you want to save a third of it, of it so that you have resources as you grow your budget and your economy that you're also growing your reserves as well. And then the other third is where you want to reinvest in yourselves. And that is whether you're doing deferred maintenance, pay raises, of doing the work to like what you were talking about for education. and uh, But remember that not all problems are solved by just throwing money at it. you got to be able to say, we've got to do it differently. A lot of the problems that we suffer from in the state of West Virginia is because we were stuck in the 1950s and 60s and were unwilling to look to the future and to try to be innovative. That was a key word that LG Industries were using yesterday, and I am 100% in favor of innovation, being able to do things differently. Look at what we want for an outcome and try to determine what would be a better way while listening to the people that are on the ground. In this case, I'm talking about the teachers, our education system. Hear what they've got to say, hear what their problems are, and then try to address it. But it doesn't take just throwing money at something to solve the problem. You gotta be able to get buy-in with it and being able to work together. And uh, you know, the classroom environment right now is difficult for the teachers because you can have one disruption 
corrupt a student. And to be quite honest with you, I can remember when that took place when I was in school. But you know what? The sheer threat of being sent to Ponytown, and I know most people don't know what Ponytown is. There's some older folks that are listening to this show that get what I'm talking about. But we're looking at this year being able to make it so that if you have a disruptive student in the classroom, you're going to get a, that student out of the classroom. They're going to go to another room where there's going to be cameras in that room and specialists to be able to deal with what's going on. And then you allow that teacher to be able to continue doing what that teacher does best, and that is educating our students. And so you can't have that disruption in the classroom because that wears the teacher down uh, to where they're, they're teaching to the lowest common denominator and to the highest instead of the highest. Forgive me. But we're looking at things like that to being able to address it. You're going to see some of that in this upcoming session to where we're going to have the back. And I'll be honest with you, the governor's talked about this. I've been working it behind the scenes. If we can manage it, we want to do a 5% pay raise for our teachers, our state employees, our school service personnel. Uh, that is essential uh, because we've been in an inflationary environment. Thank you, Joe Biden, uh, for that. But the fact is, is that it, it is what it is. And we're going to, to, if we can manage this in the budget, and I believe that we can, uh, then we're going to be able to put some resources back to help with the teachers. And that's, I, frankly, I think that that's rather incredible. Uh, it's been 5%, 5%, 5% uh, for all state employees, teachers, and school service personnel. And then last year, it was 2350 one-time payment. But then you got a tax reduction of a 21.25% tax reduction. And the more money that you made, the greater your tax reduction was. And then also, don't let's not forget about your vehicles. Uh, to where that's a refundable tax credit, yes, it's only half of it this year. But the following year, it's 100% totally eliminated. That is a good deal as well. And when they talk about the 10% increase in PEIA premiums, keep in mind that you may only pay 700 It depends on how much you make for PEIA, which is a problem in itself. But it, if you only pay $1,000 a year in premiums on PEIA, then your increase was $100. I know people in the private sector that have had increases of $100, not for the year, but for the month, and lots of times it's higher than that. So we're trying to take care of our state employees and the people that are working for us, uh, but we still have a piece to go on getting PIA, but it's a migration. Senate President Craig Blair, our guest here on the program, and uh, Craig, in addition to perhaps a 5% raise this year, and by the way, what would a 5% raise across the board for all state employees cost the state? It's normally about $175 million uh, to be able to do that. And you have to keep in mind that when you increase the wages 5%, then you're also increasing uh, PEI payments of the, that the state has to make the match uh, for that. And then we're matching or, or, or doing our match that goes into the pension systems for these employees. Gotcha. Now, but when it's over and done with, it hits right. To, to, let me back that up and sure. say that I think it'll hit closer to $185 million of, on that because each time you give a pay raise, of, I think the first time we did it, it was like $150 million. But each time you do it, it has a little bit of a compounding effect on that. And th so that's $185 million approximately. And then if you do. Uh, from what I understand and talking to all the people that do the math on these things, it's likely another 10% will kick in on the state income tax reduction. And, and I think that 10% costs, uh, is that another $200 million? Yes. All right, so you're looking at somewhere around $400 million in, uh, in revenues to cover a 5% raise and a 10% tax cut. And that basically is, is the entire surplus for the first six months of the year. So you've got it paid for already, is your point. 
they, they got to pay for already. But now keep in mind that surpluses are one thing, but you got to be careful when it comes to base building. I know I'm getting down in the weeds on this, but base building, whenever we do a pay raise, there is a base build there. And, and that means that it's the base building is that it's going to be next year in the following year, in the following year. It's always going to be there. Uh, and so we're very cognizant of that. And But we've got things that are coming online that we know that are going to generate additional revenues. And this is why a component of these of these excess revenues and, and how we go by doing things, as well as finding efficiencies in our government, we continue to do that. But we're investing in ourselves so that we know that we can grow our revenue streams while reducing those taxes. It's working. And, Craig, is, we're down to our final four minutes here. I wanted to ask you in regards to the session that is about to begin in a couple of days here. I know folks are headed down this weekend for the next legislative session. What are some of the bigger items on the agenda you hope to accomplish this year? Well, the, the biggest one for me, well, there's a couple things uh, for it, but the biggest one that will affect us economically is to take the unemployment tax and do a reduction in that, and and that is uh, for on businesses. Uh, we're out of whack of with the rest of the country when it comes to that, and we've got to make ourselves so attractive to business they cannot resist coming to the state of West Virginia. And the more business that we can actually bring in, especially southern West Virginia in the center of the state, that means the greater amount of our tax dollars in the eastern panhandle that we can keep at home. Uh, and that applies to area, other areas, but I need we need more growth areas. I'm also going to do something, uh, and it's rare for me as the Senate president to introduce a bill, but I'm going to introduce a bill because I've had enough of it. And that is is that I'm wanting to do capital punishment for uh, the manufacturers of fentanyl, illicit manufacturing of fentanyl, and the wholesale distribution of it. I'm not talking about it on the street level. Uh, but that is a problem. Uh, do I think that anybody will ever receive capital punishment because of it? The answer is no. Uh, but I want a clear message uh, that goes out to not just our surrounding states, but the world, that the West Virginia is done with it. We are tired, tired of our people being poisoned with this drug and the and associated drugs that are like that. Fentanyl has its pur purpose in the medical community. Uh, but w what is being done with it? 70% of the marijuana that is out here has fentanyl on, on it. There's something wrong with that. And we need to have a drug-free, ready-to-go, to educated ready to go to work workforce. And so this is going to be a message sender bill of out there. Of I know that my caucus is good with it because I've talked to them about it and working with it. Uh, but the people in West Virginia have had it with the drug abuse that's in this state. So we're getting ready to get tough uh, from that standpoint on that. Uh, so there you go. Greg, we know that much of the rest of the state is against a locality pay for places like the Eastern Panhandle where the cost of living is higher. What can we effectively trade to make the rest of the state happy to go along with a locality pay bill? It's not a matter of trading. It's a matter of making having more areas of the state that are growth areas like we are and when you have that then you're able to get those resources now keep in mind the gallon of gas a loaf of bread things like that are, are the same throughout the state of west virginia it's the cost of housing and the taxes that are associated with that housing that is where we need to be able to get that back or, or you know that, that's the difference you got we've we are getting to more growth areas north central west virginia is turning into a growth area counting on the northern panhandle to be doing just that and lg industry is going to be able to help with that as well as many other of the companies that are looking at west virginia or that have chosen west virginia and are expanding uh, because of the work that we've done so we're getting those growth areas it will get here okay 
Uh, it, it's and but once again, it comes down to votes. And uh, the, I'm not a dictator. That's not the way you go about doing things here. And we, we're able to get it across the finish line. And I see the day coming. Uh, I see the day coming sooner than later for that because every year goes by since we've taken over the Republican Party, it's become exponential, the, 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 the successes that are taking place in this state across the board. So I may actually see it in my lifetime unless I die next week. <laughs> I'm going to tell a little that's a, wall, it's but. a little morbid, I got to tell you. It's a little bit morbid. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I should have ended a little better note there on yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. Le- leave them wanting more, not less, Greg. Hey, uh, yeah. thanks for your time this morning. Any final thoughts? Uh, to, to, look, the people of West Virginia uh, to, to need to do understand one thing, though. The rest of the world outside the state have a higher opinion of us than what we have of ourselves. And we've got to be able to shake that. And we need to also understand one other thing. We shouldn't be so tribal that we do not celebrate the successes no matter where they are in the state. Uh, and it's happening in the legislative body to where we do now celebrate like that. And, and it's a wonderful feeling. That's called teamwork. Mitch Carmichael was talking about it, and that's what I'm talking about. We all come together, work together for the greater good of all our people. Thank you for having me on, gentlemen. Have a great day, sir. Thank you. Senate President Craig Blair at uh, 902.